Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I bring you trade paperbacks in single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites. Then I read them dramatically back to you, allowing you to understand what's happening in current comic books so that you can potentially go out and buy them yourself and have an understanding, be able to read them and know what's going on. And today, I know you read the title. It's The Death of Nightwing. But this comes on the heels of Batman going down a very dark path. He's recently questioned if Batman's methods are even any good. He's recently been dumped by Catwoman. He is not in a good place, and he won't be. Enjoy. With Bruce's last run-in with Freeze, he started to notice that things were a bit off. Batman was more angry, more irritable, more so than normal Batman fashion. Bruce used his influence to get him on the jury for Freeze's case, and even convinced everyone to let Freeze go for Batman's mistake. But seeing how harsh his reactions could be, was problematic. So Bruce decided it was time for him to return to his roots and remember exactly why he does what he does. As the next person in line walks up to the Gotham Airport immigration desk, the woman at the counter asks the man coming up for his passport. The man hands it over and the woman looks at it and she says, Mr. Zimmerman, welcome to America and welcome to Gotham. What is the purpose of your visit? Mr. Zimmerman says business and he holds out his prosthetic arm stating that he works for foundation. It helps country people who have lost limbs. There is a fundraiser that he'll be attending. The woman stamps the passport, stating that that's great to hear. That's a really good thing to do. Mr. Zimmerman takes the passport, and he says that he hopes so. But as the bat signal shines over Gotham, Batman and Nightwing get to work patrolling the streets. As the two sit on top of a nearby building, Nightwing says, Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia, Mommy, Daddy, and me! All of which Bruce says, No, no, no. The two jump down to fight back the rise of the mummy creatures. And Nightwing says, You were never one for puns. Instead, all you do is grunt and look sad. Batman knocks out a mummy, telling him, Do not grunt and look sad. I just don't want to say funny things when I fight. Nightwing says, Okay, for the sake of argument, how about you just grunt instead? Nightwing hits a mummy, and Batman grunts. And then Nightwing grunts, stating, See? Boring. But while Batman and Nightwing make sure that Gotham is a little safer, Mr. Zimmerman stops by a gun store telling the clerk that he would like to buy a rifle. The clerk says they have a lot of rifles. He's going to have to be a bit more specific. Mr. Zimmerman reaches into his coat and he takes out a small photo and he slides it to the clerk. Clerk picks it up and says, oh, that's very specific. I can do it, but it's not going to be cheap. Mr. Zimmerman tells him that he understands, but he has the money. The clerk finishes his cigarette and he blows smoke through his nose, stating hip hip hooray. So you want to wait for the government checks to come in or would you rather pay the late night expedited special? Mr. Zimmerman tells him expedited, please. Next, Mr. Zimmerman goes to an all night diner and he orders a hot dog. While sitting and listening to the people coming and going, he takes out a pen and he begins to write down something. He then pays his tab and he heads out, leaving behind the note. As the rain starts to come in, Mr. Zimmerman heads to an apartment and he knocks on the door, ringing a random person. A short while later, the man opens the door up, shouting it's three in the morning. How many times is he going to ring the damn bell? Mr. Zimmerman tells the man that he's sorry, but his mother lives on the eighth floor and she isn't answering. He wanted to make sure that everything was okay. The man sighs and he lets Mr. Zimmerman in and as he gets to the eighth floor, he knocks on a door to his mother's apartment. Moments later, Mr. Zimmerman grabs a man by the throat and he squeezes as he holds him down. The man struggles to try and pull the hand off of his neck, but slowly he loses his strength and he lets go. With no more distractions, the man walks over to the window and he unlocks it. He drops his duffel bag, taking out the rifle, and he begins to set it up, perching himself at the window as he takes aim. Meanwhile, back with Batman and Nightwing, they respond to a signal that Gordon put out and the two ask, how can we help? Gordon lights his pipe, stating that he found something at a diner over in Midtown, a napkin left on a table. The message on it read, who's afraid of the Joker? And the question mark at the end was oversized. Batman says that it's the anniversary of the end of the war, but Joker and Riddler are still in Arkham, or at least they're supposed to be, being checked out. Nightwing then yells, that's the problem for Napkin Man, I just don't. But before he could finish, there's a sound, and Nightwing reacts to a shot in his head. His head falls back, and the blood splatters. And from across the way, Mr. Zimmerman lowers his rifle as Gordon shouts to get a medical team up there. Mr. Zimmerman shuts the window, packs the rifle, and he leaves. The next day, a man sits on his couch, slowly nodding off when he suddenly hears banging at his front door. A voice in Russian calls out that he can hear his fat wheeze through the wood, put the gun down and open the door. The old man grabs a shotgun and fires at it, blowing a hole through it, stating that it's open. The door is then kicked in and the old man looks up, stating, Tolia, Mr. Zimmerman says father. Back in Gotham at the same store that Mr. Zimmerman brought his rifle from, Batman simply tells the man, run. The clerk runs and jumps out the front window as as he gets back up, Batman stares at the glass, throwing a battering that wraps around the clerk's neck, pulling him back in. 
Later at the Batcave, Batman says that the clerk confirmed his suspicion. The shooter is in Tolly, KG Beast. Alfred asks, can you find him? And Batman says, Beast is a professional killer, unlike any other, perhaps the best. Alfred sighs and says, Master Dick, sir, can he be found? And Batman says, he can, and I will. Back in the cabin in Russia, Beast asks his father how long has it been since his last drink, and his father says 26 years. Beast picks up a bottle, looking at it, asking, that long, huh? Whenever I could remember you, you always had a drink. Always raging through the house, face red with a bottle in hand. They had a name for it when you started the hard beatings. The Beast pours two shots, and he goes, the Beast. Beast then picks up his glass, stating, to the Beast. And his father looks at the glass, and with shaky hands, grabs it, stating, the Beast and he drinks it. As Beast's father pours another glass, he asks what happened to his arm, and Beast says, you know the Batman, yes. Beast's father goes to the drink asking, did he take it? And Beast tells him, no, he tried though. Beast motions like he has a knife stating, I had to cut it off to escape. Beast's father asks, so Batman had two arms and you have one. And Beast drinks again stating, I escaped. Beast's father smacks the glass out of his hand stating, I raised you to be a man, but I can see you're still a little boy. Beast then pours the last of the bottle for his father, asking, More? And Beast's father tells him, If you have more, then why not? His father sighs, telling him, You were always prepared, but I would have figured that you would have taken the man's arm. Beast himself reaches into his bag, stating, Well, I did take something else recently. I took Batman's son and a lot of money for the privilege of doing it. His father says, The son and the money, that's good, but an arm would still have been better. Beast pulls a gun out of the bag and he says, An arm is important to a man. What good really is a son? But a short distance away from the cabin, against being told not to, Batman marches in the storm. Over the radio, Alfred tells Batman that he should come back. He's beginning to lose signal. Please respond. Master Bruce, please. But as the radio goes silent, all Batman can hear is the sound of crushing snow beneath his boots as he continues to walk. Over in the cabin, Beast's father takes another drink, asking, Why do you keep me alive? You killed the rest, your brothers, your sisters, your mother, why not me? Beast tells him, Because they were weak and you were strong. I loved you, I still love you. Beast's father scoffs, telling him, For that, you are weak. But that is my fault. I let you be weak, because I loved you too. His father finishes pouring the next drink, and suddenly there's a loud bang as he's shot in the head. Beast lowers his gun, picks up the glass and takes the drink. And as he finishes, he hears the sound of crushed snow getting louder. He sets his glass down and he takes aim with his gun at the boarded up door. As Batman reaches the cabin, he reaches for the door, but suddenly ducks as a bullet is shot through at him. Beast unloads the rest of his clip at the door and with one of them hitting Batman in the shoulder. Beast then pulls the trigger until he hears it clicking. He looks out the window and he hears the sound of crunching snow. And then a battering is thrown in, hitting the prosthetic arm. The two men groan as they look at each other and Batman throws another battering, with Beast jumping through the window at Batman. Beast pins Batman to the ground, and Batman gets his foot into Beast, flipping him over. As the two get back up, Beast swings his prosthetic arm, cutting into Batman's face with a hooked end. As Batman gets back up, Beast punches him down again, and he kicks his body across the snow. Beast then walks over, looks down, and starts to kick Batman in the head. As Beast gets ready to end it, Batman reaches for his belt, taking out his grappling hook, firing it upward, hitting Beast in the chin. A loud snap can be heard, and Beast falls backwards onto the ground, motionless. As the snow begins to set in around him, he tells him, My neck is broken. And Batman tells him, Yeah. Beast goes on telling him, If you help me, I'll tell you who hired me to shoot the boy. Batman looks back telling him, I've got a bullet in my arm and a body of hurt. And there's a 300 click walk ahead of me through nothing but snow and ice. He spits a mouthful of blood. He begins to walk away stating, I'm the world's greatest detective. I'm going to find out who hired you and break them too. You can get your own damn help. And there you have it. Dick Grayson has been shot in the head. Now, I will let you know, Nightwing 51 picks up where this leaves off. Nightwing does recover, but he is not Nightwing anymore. He's not even Dick Grayson anymore. He's going to become Rick Grayson, a man with amnesia who doesn't even know who he is or who his friends are. He doesn't know what Nightwing is, so Nightwing is technically dead at this point. So, if you subscribe to our channel, we're going to be following up with this by bringing you Nightwing issue 51. We're also going to bring you the Titans fallout on this whole issue, and we're going to bring you any other tie-ins that, that basically deal with the loss of Dick Grayson, because as far as everyone's concerned, he is gone. Now, if you want to know more about that, please subscribe. You can give this video a like, and 
I'll see you next time right here at Comic Storian. But if you want more of us, check us out on patreon.com slash comic storian, where we bring you a series of podcasts, all fun and us just having a great time. If you go over there and pledge just a dollar, you'll actually be helping us out a tremendous amount as it helps us support all of our projects. And we bring you like seven different podcasts a week to kind of compensate for your dollar. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you around. Bye.